in terms of your 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 future engagement with MIT, as you know us now, but you will start to learn more about us as we become part of that wider network. So we can. So I will start by talking to you a little bit about Monaco Institute of Technology. So we've been an education provider for more than 50 years. We were in fact New Zealand's first um, institute of purpose built Institute of Technology, and we've been building on that um, those different areas of expertise over that 50 years, working with our community and working with our um, employers. These are all important um, relationships for us. So when we are transitioning through to Te Pukinga, we bring enormous um, community recognition, industry recognition, academic recognition, and we'll be adding that into the basket of um, Te Pukinga. So every year we have approximately 14,000 students at, at different types of study who will be choosing to study with Monaco Institute of Technology. We offer programs that range from certificate, degree level, um, graduate diploma, all the way through to masters. But a big focus for us, and I think something that would have been shown in the Te Pukinga video, is that focus on real world practical experience. And that's something that both Deborah and Viv can speak to um, when we start to talk more about the CAP program and also the, the nursing program that we deliver at MIT. So this is just to give you an overview of the different campuses that MIT has across our city, um, Tamaki Makaurau, Auckland. So we have a specialized maritime school. We have the Otara campus where the school was uh, originally established. We have Tech Park, which is one of our newest campus, and that's where we focus on engineering and technology programs. But today we're going to be focusing on MIT Monaco campus. So both Deborah and I are talking to you today from the Monaco campus. And the reason that we're going to be focusing on the Monaco campus is that's because that's where we deliver the um, nursing programs at MIT. So this is just to give you um, a wider view of the scale of the campus. So we're very lucky in terms of our location. We are located in Auckland and we are predominantly, our campuses are in South Auckland. South Auckland is um, a large economic center and our campuses are based in the commercial center of our part of the city. We have the fastest growing um, GDP of any sector across the country. So we're an important um, part of both our city, but also part of our country. So here we've just um, focused on a few more photographs about the Monaco campus. You'll notice that we've highlighted that the programs that we'll be talking today will be nursing. If you look um, towards the top, you'll see some students in a clinical setting. So this is a, a clinical setting at um, Monaco. This is a recently open state of the art um, nursing complex. And again, those are um, areas that um, Viv uh, can speak to maybe a little bit more when we get through to the next part of the presentation. So we thought we'd just talk a little bit about our success. So your success is our success. And I think that is something that is echoed by every person that I've certainly encountered in my time at MIT. People genuinely care about outcomes for their students. If you're successful and you're doing well in your, your chosen profession, then, then that's how we judge ourselves. So what I might do, because this is what we're here today to talk about, is if I can hand over to Viv McNair, and then we can talk more about the um, CAP program. Thank you, Kerry. Um, so kia ora everybody. Again, my name's Viv McNair. I'm the current CAP program leader for the School of Nursing at MIT Manukau. Um, firstly, just, um, it's wonderful that you're considering coming to um, to New Zealand. Um, uh, as a nursing profession, uh, we need our IQE nurses. We love having our IQE nurses in our workforce. There are a lot of IQE nurses already working in New Zealand. And so um, we certainly welcome 
with open arms any um, internationally qualified nurse who'd like to come and gain their registration and be able to work as a registered nurse in New Zealand. It's a great time to come. There's a lot of opportunities um, for nurses and in terms of employment after CAP. And um, we're finding that most of our students, even while they're on that CAP program, when they're on clinical, they're actually already been approached by the clinical areas and asking them if they would like to apply for positions. So no shortage of job opportunities once you've um, completed your CAP and lots of um, opportunities in areas that you're really interested in as well. So just back to a little bit, I'll talk a little bit about our CAP program and how it's structured, because it's always helpful to know in terms of planning to come to New Zealand. So our CAP program, it's a 12 week program. Um, it's composed of two parts. It's the first six weeks are a theoretical component. Um, and that theory is really important because it's it's giving you the foundations for your future practice as registered nurses in New Zealand. So we acknowledge all your skills and experience and expertise clinically that you're coming to. And what we're doing in that first six months of your theory um, part of your CAP course is contextualizing your practice so that you'll be well prepared for practice as a registered nurse in New Zealand so that you'll understand the legislation that underpins our practice, our professional standards and our professional practice codes and most importantly our competency framework which is how um, registered nurses in New Zealand are assessed. So after we've done our first six weeks, which are uh, taught a couple of weeks online, so in an online learning classroom, um, and then the next four weeks is um, coming to classes at MIT Manukau, which as you saw on the slide, it's a beautiful campus and it's a really modern campus. It's a really nice campus to come into. Um, while you're there on that campus, you have full use of all the facilities. So we have a wonderful library. We have a wonderful clinical learning suite where we do some clinical skills with you and we do some simulation as well. Um, we have a lot of uh, student support learning services there available that all of our CAP students can and do tap into. So there's lots of support. The other thing that's quite nice about our programs is they're not too big. Our class sizes are generally, um, you know, no more than, you know, well, it just depends, but they're normally on the smaller side. So what that means is that you get really individualised attention um, and you um, have a range of lecturers who are all specialists in the uh, teaching topics so we have um, your lecturers will come in and you'll get to know a variety of fairly senior um, nursing lecturers at MIT Manukau who are really passionate about um, seeing you go and do well so you really get to know the lecturers really well and you also get to know your other students really well which is really nice particularly um, when you're coming in and you're new to New Zealand and you're adjusting to the culture. So you immediately feel like, we like you to feel like MIT becomes your home. Um, those uh, students that you go through CAP with, we really encourage um, uh, good, good friendships and relationships. We do some fun things on our CAP course. We like to have some shared morning teas and shared lunches. We also have um, a porphyry, a special marae based um, welcome for our CAP students, which is quite special for them. Um, the Māori culture is really important um, in terms of the registered nurses um, scope of practice and how we honour to Treaty of Waitangi. So you'll get to learn about all of those um, important cultural aspects while you're on the course. After the first six weeks, we... Um, we go out into clinical. So you go out and do a clinical placement. Um, all our clinical placement providers we have um, are all accredited by, accredited by Nursing Council. In the clinical areas, you'll work with senior registered nurses as preceptors. So they'll be there to support and guide you. You'll also be visited really regularly by a clinical lecturer from MIT, who's also a senior lecturer on, on staff who understands the needs of the CAP students. So we have um, some great clinical placement providers. So we use um, Minimal Hospital, which is one of the largest uh, acute hospitals in South Auckland. Uh, we also have uh, clinical placement providers in the community as well. What we do try to do is we really look at uh, the CVs, your clinical practice experience and, and your areas that you have um, worked in. And we really try and 
met you up in a clinical area so that you can feel comfortable in that clinical area. So it's an area, for example, in my last um, program, I had four theatre nurses and I was able to get them all into placements in theatre, which they were really happy about. They were really happy. And subsequently, all of those nurses are now employed in theatre. So, yeah, it, leads, it tends to lead directly on to employment. It's a really um, good opportunity that six weeks in clinical placement because it gives students an opportunity to see what the organisation's like and what those organisational values are like and, and what that team is like and what that nursing setting's like. So it's, it works really positively both ways. Um, and then after you've um, successfully um, completed your CAT programme, then you apply to Nursing Council for your registration and get an annual practicing certificate. And at that point, you are able to, you're legally able to practice as a registered nurse in New Zealand. Um, we give support. We have a one day, we, uh, one, one of our ferry days, we have our workshop um, preparation um, day where we have our career um, centre staff come from NYT Manukau who do a workshop with you on uh, uh, writing a CV, your uh, cover letter, and we also practice interview techniques as well. And they talk through the context of what it's like to apply for a job and, and how to go about apply, applying for a job. So we give that support as well. We um, also act as um, referees. So in New Zealand, it's really common as part of a job interview to be asked to provide a couple of referees. And we're always really happy to do that for our CAT programme students and we like to keep in touch so because Auckland is a small place and nursing is a small profession in New Zealand um, we get to see our CAP students out on the wards when we're um, out there with new students and actually nothing makes us more happier than to see see our CAP students out there integrated into the nursing team enjoying the Kiwi way of life and feeling um, really happy here also really lovely because um they're really welcoming of um, our new CAP students because they understand they've been through that 12-week program themselves. So they understand the adjustments that everyone's making, not just, you know, the cultural adjustments, getting used to the Kiwi accent, coming into New Zealand and, um, you know, coming back into study. For a lot of you, you'll find that been a long time that you've been away from study so study may well have changed um so you know um we all grow and learn from each other together that's what I say to our students we all a little community that we're going through this course together and um you know and there is certainly a, a lot of um really good um support available for you yeah. I think great there's a lot of passion we can see here I think we just make sure that we have a lot of questions coming in so I'll just go to the next slide for about intakes and entry and then we can talk more again Kerry you want to take this slide or um, should or Viv can we want to take this slide uh, yeah no I can talk to it so just um, next year we will have uh, free intakes for our CAT program um, and we you know advise students to start applying early just because we know from experience there's a lot of uh, visas and paperwork and uh, Things that have to be, you know, to, to get that enrollment and to get those to get into the country. So we, um, you know, fortunately, it's becoming a little bit easier now. We haven't got the same restrictions that we've lived with for the last couple of years. So it is becoming easier. So you'll see that we, our first CAP program um, will start in January, towards the end of January 2023. And the next program after that is in May. And then the following and last program for the year for 2023 starts in, in September. Yeah. Sure. And I thank you, Vivian, that. So what I'll do is that I'll probably start taking the questions. It'll be easier uh, for everyone. Um, and it makes this kind of kind of, uh, kind, of uh, kind of interaction more better with students. Again, great, great to have all the details. So I think I can see this, some questions starting from like, uh, from home screen, if I'm not wrong, and let me know if I missed anybody's question because we did have a technical glitch. Uh, I want to confirm the ways to get registered nurse in New Zealand except IELTS or OET. Now, I believe uh, that's a mandatory requirement. Again, wave over to you. What What are your suggestion on that? I'm sorry, Barad, I didn't quite catch the question. Okay, so if, again, uh, Viv, you can also open the uh, the Q and A box on your home screen, and you can see there are a lot of questions are there. So, a uh, question is that if somebody uh, want to become a registered nurse. Are there any other options than rather than doing the OET examination or IELTS for English? No, 
No, not currently. It's part of your requirement um, to by nursing council. So the first part of the process is to uh, set up your um, application with nursing council and nursing council requires either OET or IELTS at this stage. So that's mandatory. So if yeah. I say that uh, IELTS is seven in each module, if I'm, if I'm not wrong, and what is the OET uh, uh, kind of score we are looking in or the registration okay. council looking at? So, so there has been some recent changes to both OET and IELTS. So in terms of the writing score for both, the writing score for OET is now 6.5, whereas for the other aspects, which are speaking, reading, and listening, they remain at 350, okay? And okay. with the IELTS, the writing score can now be um, uh, Six and the speaking, reading, and listening remain at seven. So there's just been a little bit of a change to new from nursing council, and it, and that brings us in alignment with internationally with whatever with whatever registra nursing registration bodies are accepting. Yeah, so that's Great. just okay. a little positive. Um, and the, the 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 candidates can sit the test more than once. And we can club the scores for entry, but they must get those uh, scores within uh, 12 months of sitting. Yeah. Great. I think that, that's that's a pretty good news and good good opportunity for students coming in. Now, coming to the question of another student from India, Babita, uh, is it compulsory to have clinical experience or a nursing tutor from India can also apply for the same? Yeah. So you need to have Nursing Council of New Zealand requires two years of clinical experience and I would imagine that they would um, accept the clinical experience as a nursing tutor as well yeah great uh, so I'm coming down to other question which is again uh, uh, again it's two years it's, it's, it's a two-year experience with within the last five years is that correct with, that's right yeah yeah coming out a question from Amar Deep from India I've completed my GNM nursing diploma in 2014 now working as a staff nurse in Punjab now GNM is a it's general nursing and midwifery, if I'm not correct. If I'm correct, uh, and this is the two two to three year qualification. So over to you. I think Kerry and uh, can I update on that, or over to you on this question. My Thanks understanding is, yeah. I don't know that that necessarily meets the nursing council requirement in terms of having the correct um, nursing qualification. So um, it, for CAP, and, and, and Viv will know this better than I do, the entry criteria is um, established by the Nursing Council. So you need to be able to meet their criteria. We'll be looking at sort of more up-to-date information around your, um, your immune status, and we'll be looking at other aspects in terms of um, references and, and other information that helps us because that helps us in terms of your, your clinical placement as well, as, as Viv was talking. Those clinical placements really are key. And Monaco Institute of Technology is very lucky in that we have a very wide established network of um, clinical partners. But part of that means that they expect us to, to meet fairly high standards in terms of the students that are going into placement. So I think, unfortunately, if you have a, um, a diploma background, I'm, I'm, I'm not confident that would meet the academic criteria for nursing but council. In, in alternate career, they can also apply for a Bachelor of Nursing if they want to, if they, if they can't meet. So alternatively, MIT offers the Bachelor of Nursing, but the seats are limited, what I understand. We have limited correct? seats. So, and and that's again, um, trying to manage that, that clinical placement. And also because nursing is a, a really important program for um, the school and our community. So we have large numbers of domestic students joining the program. We're lucky in that we have um, up to 10 places per intake for international nurses to come and study. But it does mean that when we look at the profile for the student, we, we may look at um, that person's background in terms of um, the academic profile. You can apply as someone who has um, completed a diploma program, but we don't give credit for um, someone who has maybe finished their qualification overseas because it's very difficult to get that, that match in terms of, of how our program is structured. 
Great. So, Kerry, just to adding is that there are limited number of seats for Bachelor of Nursing, but for CAP, there are no limit. There is no. So, there are a lot of seats open. Now, yeah. if I if I give a bit of brief for every student who is joining today, that uh, for 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 CAP programs, you should have a Bachelor of Nursing in your home country. You should have a two year experience of within the last five years of your uh, kind of in in that home in home country where you're coming from. You have to have your IELTS, you have to or, or OET. Uh, what else is needed apart from that um, for the requirement? Um, so, so once you have gone through the nursing council registration, initial registration program, process, then the applicant will be um, directed to then apply to do a CAP program. So by by fulfilling what the nursing council has said, once you get that letter of, to set, direct that applicant to do the CAP program, then usually meets all of our entry requirements. Great. Just like Kerry said at the beginning, one of the big things that our students need to have because it's a, a for our for clinical placement is the immune status done. Okay. Yeah. So we so, need to have a full immune status and to make sure that the students are fully vaccinated and protected before we can put them out into clinical. Yeah. So we do do all that screening before they come. Yeah. So coming down to on this, uh, and because it's the next question is the visa process. So technically, if student better go first to the nursing council or should come to you before applying for the CAP program? They, they need to go through. They need to start to get, go through nursing council and start the application with nursing council and go through the CGFNS process, which is a verification process for nursing council, which verifies their identity documents, their employment history, the education history, their license, that they've got a current registration in their own country, they have to have a current registration, and their language proficiency. So they do that initially, and there is a cost to the applicant for doing yep. that. Um, and then once they've been, once the Nursing Council has verified that and assess, assess that their um, education level in their own country is satisfactory, then they will say that provide that applicant with the go-ahead to then enroll in a CAP program provider of their choice. Great, Bill. And it's great for a little explanation. What we'll be what we'll be adding, we'll be adding the link for the nursing council registration and all of the I know for all our um, uh, listeners and, and, and our viewers today. So it'll be great to see that yep, so everyone have to go to this uh, nursing council before they went for a CAP. So this is what have to be followed in. So coming on just, the visa process, go ahead. I was Kerry. just wondering, um, Bharat, there's a question there from, I think it's Babita. Just because Babita wasn't able to hear the answer about whether a nursing tutor is also eligible to apply. So maybe Viv, if you're able to. Yeah, um, a nursing yeah, tutor she, would yeah. be yeah. eligible to apply. Still need to go through nursing council. Everyone needs to go through the nursing council process first, but yes definitely would be able to apply. I've had previous nursing tutors on my CAT program, so yeah. I Great. think there was and just a, yeah. one more question about repeating the IELTS because that has changed, um, whether we repeat it now or whether it's best for us maybe just to send it out to people um, because then they've got, um, they've got a paper trail. Maybe that's a better option. Sure, no, we'll be sending the details to everyone in terms of links. So again, uh, Priyanka or me will be adding the links to all the things here. And even the MIT's program did, will be going in. Uh, just going on the visa process. So Priyanka, do you want to add on the visa process for question of Navneet, which is there? Right. Uh, so along with Navneet, I would even like to add uh, Jaspreet's question as well, where the question has been asked, is this a study visa or a work visa? So to talk about visa, guys, you would be apl applying for a student visa. Uh, so like Viv has mentioned that uh, you would first need to go through the procedure of obtaining the offer letter for CAP. Once you get the offer letter, uh, you would be providing that offer letter to the Immigration New Zealand. Uh, from the New Zealand education provider. Along with that, you would be providing a copy of your identity document, which is your valid passport and evidence of your tuition fees. Um, along with that, you would also be providing evidence you have enough money to live and uh, proof of where this money has come from um, to show that you would be able to sustain yourself while you are staying in New Zealand. Uh, Plus, you may have to show evidence that you have enough money um, to 
like the living expense for New Zealand is 20,000 New Zealand dollars for one year, but CAP program being 12 weeks. So you need to uh, appropriately calculate it and show the evidence to the immigration New Zealand. Along besides this, you would also be showing the evidence of your health and character as well to immigration New Zealand. So this is, um, these are the documents, the uh, what immigration New Zealand would require. Along with that, you would be providing your supporting information like your statement of purpose or cover letter and um, any of your previous uh, passport stamps and um, any declines, you have to declare it. Anything on the application that you think you need to declare, you would need to declare it uh, to the immigration to ensure like, you know, you are giving all the information which is appropriate over there. So yeah, this Great. is the procedure. Yeah, thank you, Priyanka. And, that's uh, sorry, I'm, what, uh, sorry, I'm on the time side. It'll be great to add no. because we have around 19 other questions going in. What I'll recommend right. will be that it'll be great to add, and we'll be adding more answers on this. It'll be great if you yeah. can add your email ID on that so students can start contacting on those things. Um, I'll even share a link yeah. of the checklist of information that you need to provide for your first student great. visa application. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much for that, Priyanka. I'm going to uh, Sonam from India. I said, where will certificate is provided? So. Again, so the CAP program is uh, done in New Zealand. It is not an online program. You have to study in person in New Zealand to get uh, moved towards your registration. It can be only done when you get confirmation from the nursing council that you will get a go ahead for a CAP. You apply to MIT through either uh, um, us or, or Unique Way or RBS or through the partners of uh, or our partners. And we'll be sharing the list of the partners also to you uh, who can help you with the whole processing also. But at the same time, yes, uh, it will be done face-to-face uh, -face in New Zealand. Now going to question of uh, Ibrahim from Nigeria. Th again, I, you know, thanks Ibrahim for joining. Uh, your question is that, uh, again, for the decision which we has covered or Priyanka has covered also, we'll be happy to support you with your answer, uh, how things will be kind of uh, uh, done. You have to go to just nursing council, follow the process of getting the in-condition or like approval for applying for CAP, and then we go to MIT. Uh, to apply for a cap offer letter before we start the visa process. Again, uh, just the question is answered by Priyanka, if I'm not wrong. We have Rajvinder Kaur uh, coming from India. GNM nursing student can apply for this and what is the process of visa for them and can apply without IELTS or OET. I believe we have answered all this question in, in, our, um, in our other answers. Rajvinder, uh, IELTS and OET is mandatory. GNM students uh, can apply, but again, it is not confirmed that you will be getting through a registration. Better you apply for a bachelor option or there are links will be sent to you that can you go for a registered nursing um, or you meet the criteria of becoming a registered nurse or not. Uh, as what we understand, uh, it is unlikely you will go through a uh, you don't have a bachelor of nursing uh, or as a registered nurse in, in the home country. Again, just with your question was repeated again. Um, Lakshman from India, your question is that, is there a recruitment OET or IELTS? Uh, so Lakshman, this will be academic IELTS or academic OET. Is that correct, Viv or uh, Kerry, you, want, you can uh, help me to answer this? You can yeah. either do OET or IELTS. It doesn't matter which one you choose to do. But it'll be academic IELTS, not the general IELTS. Is that correct? That's right. It would be the academic. Okay, great. So Lakshman, here the answer is academic IELTS or you do OET? Uh, going to permit this question, um, general nursing midwifery diploma from India is valid for New Zealand. Is it possible? I'm interested to work in New Zealand. I is necessary or like the same question and what's the score needed? So I believe what we've said about the academic score, what is needed um, in terms of IELTS, in terms of OET, uh, we will be sending the link, but um, my worry is that for CAP, GNM may be a bit of challenge. Uh, we'll still send you the link of New Zealand uh, Nursing Council. It'll be great to check and see if you're eligibility and you get the cap of um, go ahead. That will be the key. Is that correct, uh, Kerry and Viv? If Nursing Council approves it, uh, we are happy to deliver cap to students. Great. Uh, the question from Diksha coming in, do I need experience for the application of nursing program education? And I believe Viv have answered that question. Viv, you want to repeat? I'm happy two, to repeat the answer. Yes, two, <laughs> two years. Two years for Nursing Council at, the current, at this current time. And this two years should be in last five years. It should not be more than like, if you've done two years uh, in last more than five years, it will be not accepted. It should be either two years immediate or two years uh, in last five years. 
Is it right. correct? And, yes. and again, we're adding to that this, if I've done six months, then take a gap of one year, then six months, that is a separate in the last five years or, or yes. you want a two yes, year yes. stretch? No, that would be accepted by nursing council. Great. Thank you, Diksha. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Vivan. And again, here's Diksha's question. We have got from an anonymous attendee. I would like to ask about my experience. I recently worked in ED department or I think emergency department, if I'm not wrong, from 2011 until 2016. And now I'm working with public health care. How my experience will be counted? Thank you. Public well, health care counts its nursing experience. Yes. Uh, so is it in particular or a way on that, that uh, the public health care will be, what kind of experience will it will be coming uh, in terms of public health care? If I want to be a bit of, uh, not, be but uh, kind of not generic, what kind of experience will be coming in? Um, well, I th it's a bit hard to answer that question specifically because I don't know what that applicant's um, been doing, but generally public health is part of um, a nursing scope of practice, so working in public health, you might have been working in the community in a immunisation setting or in a um, primary health care setting with uh, doctors and nurses providing community-based care. Yeah. Great. Uh, I'm coming down to question of uh, Rachel from Philippines. I'm from Philippines and staying in India for six years. Wow, that's pretty, pretty good to know. I'm overseas citizen on India and registered nurse license number in Philippines. I have two year experience in clinical and now currently working as a private duty nurse. Yes. Um, with, or it's accepted. That's good. Yes. And again, uh, Rachel, you can apply your visa from India also because there will be a processing done on the, the basis what you are current, on the current country you are in, if I'm not wrong. Again, Priyanka, you want to add something on that? No, that's correct. Uh, she can even apply in India because yeah, right. her citizenship, basis of citizenship, she can apply it from any country. Uh, her application will be processed accordingly from which nationality she belongs to. Great. Uh, so guys, I've, I've just shared some uh, links for the visa and other kind of processes. It'll be great to go through it. Um, coming down to uh, the next question from... Uh, Babita, is there any certain amount of money we have to show before a moving to New Zealand? So Priyanka, what do you? Yeah, Babita, you would need to show your tuition fees, uh, evidence of your tuition fees uh, uh, for the 12 weeks gap program. I'm not too sure. I think we will be able to give you an approximate amount of the tuition fees. And along with that, you would need to show a living cost of your living expense, which should be approximately 5,000 New Zealand dollars um, um, if we are talking about for 12 weeks. So yeah, Viv, do you want to talk about- um, So the fees, the fees, at, fees at the moment are about 10 and a half thousand New Zealand dollars for the yeah. CAP program. The applicants need to be aware that there's also costs for going through the initial applicant process with Nursing Council of New Zealand. Um, so that's um, a cost that they need to be aware of as well. Um, but there is recent, there is some government funding at the moment available for our IQNs coming in um, that they can apply once they've been successful on the CAP program. So we can provide some links for the for people that are interested to have a look because that's quite generous funding. It's up to $10,000. $10, yes, yes, it's amazing. So I, I think I'll well, add that's it. Nice. Yeah. yeah, so I'll add it here. Yeah, guys, if we'll be recommending you to share your CV and send to Priyanka because there are opportunities where employers are supporting for that $10,000 of CAP program funding. Then the idea is that New Zealand need nurses. So what, what they're doing, overseas nurses are coming uh, on either healthcare assistant working visa options or they're coming for nurses. Employers are supporting for giving a job offer later on the condition to completion of CAP program. So there are a lot of options are there. Do send the CVs, we can assess those. We can recommend the right options again. Uh, and I know a nurse, if, if you ask me, I was I was talking to a, a kind of uh, an employee this morning, which is from aged care. And then they said uh, they require at least, if I'm not wrong, 17 nurses in by next nine months. And they have a 260 bed aged care um, in the East Auckland, which is not far away from uh, MIT campus. So I'm just giving a very small uh, example here, but then do share your CVs. If you're a registered nurse, if you have IELTS and you've met the OET, there are multiple options where whatever investment you're doing towards CAP can be supported by your employer and they can see the future opportunities there. But again, and I, we, we are also bringing licensed immigration advisor 
in our next webinar to see and talk about these things. Uh, coming on to question to Venus from Philippines, can you repeat ALT's passing score? Uh, I believe yes. Uh, we'll go over to you. you. We can accept two different, um, we can club two scores at the same, at same time. Yeah, you can um you you can do you can club your scores as long as they're within one year of passing the test and your um uh um speaking and reading and listening score for IELTS remain at seven, but your writing score has dropped down to six. Great. And and again, guys, uh, we will be sharing the links again. Uh, and Priyanka will be adding the links uh, very soon there about the whole uh, journey or, the, or even the link to the Nursing Council website will be helpful. Coming now to uh, Jisna Jacob from India after OAT or IELTS, CAP is the only course or I need to study to become registered nurse or, or is there anything called, what about OSCE? So we've, is there, they have to do more courses apart from CAP or is CAP is the only option or is the only option or in only course? Um. Um, yeah, CAP is the only course if you want to come into New Zealand. Well, you have to do your application to Nursing Council, and then based on what how they assess you, they will either allow you to be registered directly or direct you to do a CAP program and be successful on your CAP program. Then they will register you in New Zealand. So it all depends on your application to Nursing Council and how they assess you. Yeah. I think my, it's I repeat the my only question way, now, I think, unless yeah, you so can the, decide to retrain. Yeah. Great. And um, I think, uh, sorry to add, I, I repeat my question again here, which I think I read wrong here. Uh, is apart from OET or IELTS, can they do any other English examination or, or no, these are the only option? Only uh, OET or IELTS are the only ones that Nursing Council accept. Uh, so because she, the student was talking about OSC. So just now OSC is not accepted. Uh, that's your no. answer here. No. Uh, going back to again, Babita, you, you, I think you repeated the question because you were not able to hear. Uh, nursing tutor can apply for CAP program. Uh, yes, well, nursing tutor can apply to nursing council. Yes. And then nursing council will assess them and refer them to a CAP program. Yes. Uh, I I'm, I'm agreed to Viv. I think I'm, I just need to repeat it again back again. Now you totally agreed. Thank you for correcting me here. Uh, may um, from Philippines where I can see the link uh, for the list of requirements. I think May have just shared the link and I believe Priyanka will be sharing again. Priyanka, you can share it for everyone and then share it. It'll be easier. Or otherwise, guys, uh, we will be uh, putting you uh, the links in the uh, email which will be coming after the webinar in any case. Again, Pooja from India. I think Pooja, you've joined late. Can GNM students apply for New Zealand registration? Uh, Pooja, we will... Uh, we will not recommend the GNM student to apply for CAP program because I believe they uh, they don't meet the criteria of nursing council. But what we are suggesting to everyone, because as a requirement of CAP, you have to apply for registration council first. If nursing council approves you to get the CAP, go ahead or gives you CAP, go ahead. Please uh, then reach, uh, reach out to MIT or us. We can help you with the option again. But the GNM, is one of the requirements which is not confirmed yet that nursing council will accept as an entry requirement to CAP or to become a registration. Sorry, is that correct, Pip? Uh, I'm just getting hang, getting through it. A lot right. of learning have been happened for me today also. You're doing, doing um, really well, yes. Great, uh, thank you. Uh, Lalita from India, what is the process of registered nursing licensing of New Zealand and what is the time frame of getting the license by international nurses? So Viv, yeah. how much time it takes to get nursing council to give a go ahead uh, to right. apply for a go uh, To CAP? Yeah. Uh, it, I re it, it um, depends on how many applicants are processing and depends on the applicants doing everything correctly. Sometimes nursing council gets held up because applicants haven't provided the information. So they need to go through that initial process of having all their documents verified. And that can take a little bit of time. Once it that once I've done that process um, with the um, CGF, CGFNS service, then I think nursing council are pretty good at getting their processes done, getting them assessed, and then directing them either to be able to be registered or then come into a CAP. Then it's going to take 12 weeks 
to do their cat course and then it's going to take about a month after that to get up to about a month to get their nursing council registration if they've been successful on their cat course yeah they need to great. be successful yeah, yeah. great and, and just to add here is that the visa processing time from getting the cap off later to the processing time it can be 20 to 30 working days and uh, that's how the processing time of INZ is going for now but again this is a process so we will recommend to start early if you can it, like what we've said earlier for January, we recommend to start the process now. If yes. you are there, <laughs> do reach out to us. There are email IDs again. Uh, we'll be sharing it with everyone. Yeah, especially because we have a, cl a closed down period over Christmas, New Year. So, you know, we are shut down for three weeks. <laughs> so, Great. you know. And, and again, Kerry and Viv, you're welcome to share your email IDs if you want to share it to students. If they want to reach out to you, they are welcome to reach out to you. From our end, we, we will be supporting in any case. So, going to question from um, Anne Mary uh, from India. Hi, hello, I'm Anne Mary George from India. I've completed my bachelor's, uh, bachelor of naturopathy and yoga science uh, in 2017. Will will I be available, uh, eligible for registered nursing or RPN? No, I think I can see see the webs uh, face. No, so I think and uh, we'll recommend you can do the alternate option. Either you can apply for uh, there is uh, if if you're okay, there are options of masters of nursing practice at University of Waikato which can be taken by students uh, from other areas. And, and you're welcome to go to Unique Way website to get those answers. I hope Kerry and Viv, you're okay. I'm just mentioning there mm -hmm. are options, which are a two-year yeah. program in uh, Hamilton, and they, a lot of students are going towards that if, if they have not done nursing um, in, in, the, in the bachelor's. So that's the alternate option they can get in. Now, Navneet uh, is saying, I'm doing a PSN. Will it be valid for uh, nursing registration? So Viv. I believe no, but I'm happy to have your advice here. Sorry, what is uh, a PTE? PTE is a PSN, uh, PSN English Test of no, English. No, only OET and IELTS. Mm. Only Agreed. those I, two. I, I yeah. agree with that. And I, I know I was talking to AUT University and they have said that only yeah. for nursing they need uh, for registration uh, else as a mandatory. For any other health courses, yes, PSN is accepted, but not for nursing. So now need you might have to uh, either get the IELTS or OAT. Going back to just now, uh, again, it's a processing time. We have talked about it. We'll recommend if you're looking for January intake, start yeah. now. We need to do a lot of things before we go right on that. Uh, again, uh, going to Ibrahim, what is the financial cost of the program? Ibrahim, mentioned, it was mentioned that it was around $10,500 for the CAP program, but there are other costs, uh, costs also involved, which is in terms of processing of uh, registration application and again the living expenses and everything so um, we normally recommend between 25 to uh, around 20 to 25 thousand dollars including your living expenses should be required in the uh, process of six to eight months if i'm if i'm very clear i'm talking about uh, so yeah and again you need to check uh, with um, and do recommend to go to immigration website and see the requirements for nigerian students separately too so going to question from Pooja, thank you, sir, for the answer. One more question I have done, my post basic BSc nursing in 2020, but I did not receive my degree. And I have a five-year experience with GNM. Can I add my BSc degree with the experience? Viv, over to you. I'm not sure that nursing council would accept that one. Hmm. Okay, so again, Pooja, recommendation will be, if you can, if you can see the link of, uh, um, nursing council and again like like we've said and we have been repeating again before applying for cap you have to apply for it with nursing council if nursing council assesses your qualification and your experience and your registration or uh, you need to make sure that they give a go ahead and then only mid will provide you a cap offer later mm -hmm. is that correct that's right. so yeah. that's how we are going in it will be good to have this question because I, a lot of times students don't get to know what is the actual requirement and how they're going in. But then again, uh, we do work with a lot of partners in India, Philippines, and Sri Lanka. We'll be recommending people to go through those uh, either licensed advisors or partners to see the option. Or otherwise, we'll recommend to please do send your CVs or background questions to us. We can help you out with those answers. Um, I, I can see, uh, I'm just sharing the... Uh, nursing council website for everyone so that i it will be easier kept for the last um, but again any questions uh, anyone have you're welcome to ask question otherwise i have one or two questions here for Viv and kerry again kerry it'll be great to 
mentioned if you're visiting India, uh, and again, if people soon can reach you out, can they reach you out? Will there be an option to meet you and see you? Uh, it'll be great. You're in India and Philippines in the next one, one and a half month. Will that be um, good to have you? Yeah, I'm I'm always happy to to talk to people. That's probably the reason why I enjoy doing the job that I'm doing. It's it's given me enormous pleasure to meet people like Barat. I've worked with Barat <laughs> for you. Barat and I won't even talk about how long we've worked together. <laughs> only two only two decades, I can I can tell that. Long, 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 long time. <laughs> and also the opportunity to work with Priyanka. So um no more than more than happy for people to um reach out. Um, so I can try sharing my contact address. I will be in the Philippines. I'm in Manila and Cebu between the 20th to the 23rd. It's my first time ever visiting um, the Philippines and I am extremely excited because I hear it is a beautiful place. So I'm very much looking forward to having a chance to meet people in person. Um, and then I'll go back to India. So I cover a range of cities when I'm there from the very, very north um, in the Punjab. I'll be visiting Chandigarh, Ludhiana and Amritsar. I'm going through Delhi. I'm going, hopefully going through Hyderabad, Chennai. Um, I'm looking at Bangalore, Mumbai, um, Kochi. I think those are the main centers that I'll be going to. So it's um, it's a real pleasure for me to visit India. It's been like a second home for me for a long time. And, and we've certainly seen some really successful students, but we've equally seen some incredibly successful, strong students coming to, through to us from um, the Philippines and also from Nigeria. I think our top, one of our top students on our Bachelor of Nursing is a, a young man from, from Nigeria. So it's a real privilege for us to have people representing different communities on our campus because Auckland is a very multicultural city. So when you're in our city, we hope that you will feel welcome because again, that's something that you know the city finds exciting is having all these different cultures represented. And you will certainly see those on the campus and in your classroom. So great. So, Kerry, you, are you okay if I share your email ID on the yeah, chat no box? Problem. Of you? Yes, so I've just done that. And again, and if you go to Kerry to Bangalore, you can meet Priyanka. She's based out of Bangalore. Oh, there you to go. Catch up and see. Yeah, we will, Here Priyanka. We will. I, am and waiting, I, I was waiting to hear the name of the city while she was listing everything. <laughs> And Kerry, I can see people are already welcoming you to Philippines. Oh, thank uh, we you. have Darren welcoming you there. So, yeah. Uh, so, great, Daryl. And again, uh, guys, I we'll recommend everyone to please send your details. Just email again, Priyanka. You can share your email ID or I can put um, hello at uniqueway.com. So I send oh. your CVs. We'll be recommending and connecting you at the same time. But again, uh, going to, uh, I, we have some questions. So, Amandeep, your question was nursing council email ID. Sorry, we can't give that. We'll recommend that to go to the website and reach out. But suggestion will be you can reach out to us. We will help you to the process or our partners will help you out in that. I can see the question coming from, so Daryl, again, thank you for putting that message. And I believe Kerry is typing for that. A question from Larani from coming in. Um, um, I had a degree of the SC nursing 2018 and I passed uh, PNLE this June. I was a nursing aide for three years. Um, so PNLE, I don't understand. To be honest, again, if you know the term, I will be I'm very bad on the health. Yeah, I don't understand the term either. But what nursing council is looking for is registration as a registered nurse in your country, and that recency of practice experience of having had two years of practice in the last five years. So again, need to go through to the nursing council website and and look at that process there. Great. I think uh, that'll be great. Uh, so thank you, everyone. That again, we have just sent some these uh, details about the nursing council. Um, coming down to uh, everyone, guys, thank you for joining. I, I can I don't want to take time. It's 8 30, and Viv and Kerry have been working hard this time, this evening. But no, thank you, everyone, for joining. It's it's a very uh, great webinar. I appreciate for having you all. Thank you, Viv. Thank you, Kerry. And thank you, Priyanka. Any last minute words you're welcome to add here, but otherwise, um, great to see you all. Thank you so much for having me, Joy, um, and I've appreciated the opportunity to talk about the CAP program, and I hope that we're going to see some applicants starting to come through for our program for January. We're in our last program for the year, 
um, at the moment. So really looking forward to starting to see some of those applicants come through so that we um, um, can start off in January, at the end of January. So thank you again for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Lovely to meet thank you, you all. Thank you, Viv. Uh, thank you, Kerry. And thank you, Priyanka. So I'll be stopping the recording. Kerry, over to you. You want to add some words? Otherwise, uh, all good. No, I'm I, again, thank you to everybody. Um, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Um, and thank you also to Bharat and Priyanka for organizing this event. We're really happy to be working with Unique Way. I think what's been important for us is that Unique Way has a real understanding of New Zealand. And that for us is different from some of the other digital platforms that have approached us that we we feel that that knowledge about of New Zealand is embedded in the platform that they have developed. So thank you, Bharat and Priyanka, for the opportunity. Thank, thank you, Kerry, and thank you, Viv. Thank you, Thank you, Priyanka. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Priyanka. Yeah, and look forward to thank you, Bharat.